Hey folks, what's going on? Today we're going to be looking at some projection mapping tools inside of Touch Designer. Now this isn't meant to be a deep dive into exactly how to projection map, but more so just giving you a high level overview of the tools you already have available to you pre-built inside of Touch Designer and how you might go about each one of these tools. So the first and foremost tool that a lot of people are probably going to be using is called Cantan Mapper. Now if you look inside of the palette and you go to mapping, you're going to find Cantan Mapper in here and you can just drag and drop this inside of your network. Now people who are familiar with Mad Mapper or Resolume and how projection mapping is usually done in those applications where you're essentially drawing these different kinds of masks and shapes and then assigning textures to it, you're going to feel really familiar with the workflow of Cantan because that's what Cantan is basically built to do. It's built to be a 2D masking style of projection mapping and what you can do, for example, is open up the Cantan window, go ahead and access the tools, and then start drawing different kinds of masks and shapes. So we'll make a few quick shapes here. And then once you have these masks created, you can go ahead and assign movie file textures to them. So for example, I could assign something like count.mov, and I can just simply drag and drop this onto my shape. And I could go ahead and assign a nature video just to test. And with that said, you can already see how quick and easy it can be to do something with Cantan Mapper, especially when you don't have a lot of production time. Now, Cantan Mapper is great because it's, it's very easy to use, very flexible. But when it starts to come to more 3D oriented kind of projection mapping techniques, that's where Canton Mapper falls a little bit short. Now, before we move on to that, one useful thing that you might find with Canton Mapper is that as you're using it, it's quite a heavy tool. And what you'll find is that there's a second output on Canton Mapper here where the first output, if I make a null top here, that's the output that you could feed directly to a projector. But the second output is actually a displacement map, a UV displacement map. There we go. And that UV displacement map can be used with another tool in the palette called the Cantan UV Helper. And what this does essentially is take in that UV map, and there's a nice little button here to update the cache inside. And what you'll see is using that map, you can assign the textures to be fitted to those different masks that you've created. Now with any of these tools that we're going through today, the nice thing is if you want to find out actually how to deep dive into using them, all of them have a help button. And when you click that help button, it's going to take you right to the palette on a page that tells you how to use it, what it's about, and just giving you a little bit of basics on how to get started with it. So that's kind of the Cantan and what I would consider the 2D masking side of projection mapping. Now, if you're familiar with the open framework scene, you've probably seen a tool before called Mapamock. And Mapamock was created by Kyle McDonald uh, while he was working at YCAM Interlab. And it's a really cool tool where essentially your whole purpose is to recreate the real world environment in your virtual environment. And what you can see through a lot of this video that kind of talks about Mapamock is that you want to measure what your projection mapping to create a 3D accurate model of whatever you're trying to projection map off. And then once you go into the software side of things, you take this 3D model and you tell the camera or map a mock as we're going to see in, in Cam Snapper in a moment, you tell it where the virtual points on the model are in real life. And it does some really nice math behind the scenes to then calculate a replica of your projector as a camera inside of your software. Now, I know that sounds a little bit uh, confusing, but the big thing to remember is that when you're working with this 3D kind of projection mapping, the whole goal that you're trying to achieve is recreating the real world in your virtual environment. Now, inside a touch designer, we have a tool called Cam Snapper, and you're going to see that inside of the palette under mapping Cam Snapper. And Cam Snapper is essentially a port of Kyle McDonald's map and mock work implemented inside of touch designer. Now, one of the really cool things about CamSnapper is that it's built inside of an actual camera component. 
And what that allows you to do is go through the process of calibrating your cam snapper setup or your map of mock setup. And you're going to be left with a camera component that has the same kind of projection matrix that your projector is going to have. So that means whatever your real world projector sees is going to be exactly what your virtual camera sees. And in this case, when you're using cam snapper, a lot of the time what you'll do is pre-make your content on a UV map and then texture your 3D model with that kind of new kind of content that you've created. And this is why a lot of the time what you'll see is that when people don't have a lot of production time, they're going to rely more on Canton Mapper. But if you do have maybe a bigger budget and you have an accurate 3D model of whatever you're trying to projection map off of, and you have a little bit of time in production to take the UV maps, do a UV unwrap, create content on that UV map, then you can start to think about Cam Snapper as a really cool tool that you can use for that. And similarly to before, if you hit the help button on Cam Snapper's uh, custom parameters, you're going to be dropped into a full page that kind of talks about how to use it and, and what you can do with it. Now, going away from the kind of more obvious 2D and 3D projection mapping tools, there are a couple other tools that are really helpful. One of them is actually Stoner. And Stoner, again, is inside of the palette, inside of mapping, and you'll see it at the bottom here. And Stoner is essentially really just a keystoning tool with a grid warping built into it. Now, you might not think to yourself, oh, well, you know, this is really a projection mapping tool. But what often happens is whenever you're working with projection mapping, nothing's perfect. You know, the 3D model might be slightly off if you're using Cam Snapper, or maybe you set up a whole Cantan system and then projector maybe got nudged a little bit, or it's acting a little bit funny around the edges of the lens. There's always some little area where you can do a little tiny bit of refinement. And Stoner is a great piece of tool that you can put all the way at the end of your chain. So after you've done all your mapping, after you set up Cantan, after you set up Camp Snapper, and if you just need to nudge a few pixels here or nudge a few pixels there, this can be a really easy tool to just say, you know what, maybe grab the corner, bring it in a little bit, maybe switch it to grid warp mode. Oh, you know, this area right here, I just need that one to go a little bit to the left. You can make these kind of very minute micro adjustments to the output very quickly and very easily. So it's definitely a tool to keep in your back pocket if you're working on projection mapping. Now the final two tools that I'm going to talk about are less tools and more examples because there are a lot of people who have always tried to do something called a trompe l'oeil, uh, which is kind of a perspective projection trick. Um, you've probably seen it in a lot of different places. You know, if you've ever seen that effect where, you know, the, the two corner, the two edges of the wall meet in the corner and then somebody projects on it, but it looks like, you know, an infinite tunnel. Those are the kind of tricks and perspective effects that are in this trompe l'oeil setup. And inside of Touch Designer, we have two examples of how to do that. One of them is called Sweet Spot. And Sweet Spot is also in that mapping section at the bottom here, Sweet Spot. And this is really just a bare bones example. There's not much documentation to it, but it's just showing you the workflow that you need to go through. Whereas Sweet Spot Previs is a little bit more helpful. Now, Sweet Spot Previs is not in the mapping section. It's actually in the technique section near the bottom here. And what Sweet Spot Previs has that is nice is a big kind of piece of text that explains to you how Trompe l'oeil works, explains how this Sweet Spot projection perspective trick even works, and then has an example that shows you, okay, well, you know, here's where the person, the viewer is going to be. That's the camera that represents them. Here's the content getting generated. Here's the Previs. Here's the uh, geometry for the actual projection screen. So it goes through a little bit better of teaching you how to do these kind of things. Now this can be really useful because if you've never done trompe l'oeil before, it can be a little bit of a complicated thing to wrap your head around. So I highly recommend if you are getting into these kind of perspective tricks with projection, take a look at Sweet Spot Previs, take a look at Sweet Spot because those are going to be really helpful tools that you can use. Now, with that said, that's not the only tools, but these are more than enough to get you up and running with projection mapping inside a touch designer quickly and easily. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.